I see somebody tuning up on the guitar over here. She's going to answer many folks who have written to ask her to sing Please, Mr. Mailman again. Here's Rosalie Mason. Right? They gave me a 15-minute program on Saturday nights. So I'm sitting there ready to sing my theme song. And the announcer said, what are you, what are you going to use for a name? And I'd never thought of that. And I said, I don't have one. And he told me to, he says, go ahead and sing your theme song and I'll think of something. So I'm singing, oh, carry me back to the mountains. And he called me Rose of the Mountain. I might have had a rose in my hair because at that time I remember I used to wear flowers in my hair. So that's... So I was Rose of the Mountain. And then as years went by, it was, uh, it, the, the rose really stuck. And I was Rose. Jay Stewart, who emceed the show, town hall party. I don't know where the idea came from, but he called us Mr. and Mrs. Country Music. And it sort of stuck. Oh, please, won't you stop at my door? I never had a plan. I never had high ambition. It was just like whatever God had for me. I never wished that I was singing on the Opry. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. But uh, there was a path that finally led, led me there, led me to Nashville. Well, I happened to marry uh, Joe Maphis. He was known as King of the Strings. Uh, it required a divorce on his part. But in Virginia, at that time, you couldn't get married again for two years. It was uh, to, for it to be legal. You had to have a two-year waiting period, okay. And uh, Joe was offered a job in California doing TV. And of course I'm going along, you know. And we went to Tijuana and got married. We were married then later in uh, Vegas, okay. But, uh, the Tijuana marriage. Now you may kiss her. <laughs> I understood that part. <laughs> yeah. Now we had been working in Virginia where you didn't work clubs. We had never worked with drums. 
uh, and electric guitars, electric instruments is just now getting uh, started, you know, in the early 50s. We're going, we're working at the, at the Blackboard Cafe in Bakersfield. And they get up and dance. You're singing, and they get up and dance while you're singing. We weren't used to that. East of the Mississippi, they sit and watch. But west of the Mississippi, they danced. TV was new then, and we were doing television every, every day except Sunday. And, uh, and then when town hall party started, we did three hours television every Saturday, every Saturday night. Mary, 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 Mary me. How about that, Rosie? You marry me for Mary. How about except your paper pins if that's the way our love begins and how not marry me. We lived in California. We moved out there in 1951, the fall of 1951 until 1968. You know, of course, the Opry is here. Is was here. That is the ultimate uh, job. We had been touring for, what, about three years, and uh, we really wanted to settle down. And Art Divine was uh, managing the Opry then. So we asked Art about, uh, a, about the Opry, and Art said uh, he couldn't promise anything he says but you go you come on and move back here and we'll work out something so we go back to California and we decide that the following uh, summer when the kids got out of school that's when we would make our move we moved to Nashville Joe and Rose Lee Mapis. thank you Tommy thanks a lot Oh, this is a great thing in Ben's Weera. Here for the fanfare, we live here now, but this is the home of the Grand Ole Opry, and we have a big time every Saturday night. We recorded a song a while back called Hot Time in Nashville. We thought it'd be appropriate, okay? There's three young'uns in the family, too, you know. So they started building motor homes, and we got our, fo our first motor home in 1962. You could be on a tour with maybe five or six different acts. And I'd always do some, you know, cook a pot of beans and uh, for everybody that was on the tour. And uh, I am using in my utensil drawer uh, a set of silverware that Ernest Tubb and his band uh, got for me, you know, because I would do, you know, we worked with Ernest quite often, and they surprised me with that service for 12 silverware. It's got, it even has a rose on it. It makes you feel good, of course, especially when you hear someone portraying their version of your of a song that you wrote. And I was fortunate enough to write a couple songs and, uh, and have them recorded. Connie Smith recorded a song I wrote called Love is the Look You're Looking For. Waylon Jennings recorded a song called This Time Tomorrow. And of course, Joe's popular song, Dim Lights, Thick Smoke, and Loud, Loud Music. Dim lights, thick smoke, and loud, loud. 
Dwight Yoakam recorded it, and so many, at least a couple dozen, has recorded that song. If you were working together, you'd, you hung out then. You'd be touring with little Jimmy Dickens, and that was, you know, we went fishing one time. We rented a, a pontoon boat or something. We met Johnny Cash in California when we lived out there. It was a time, you know, when John was getting popular and uh, the talk was John, Johnny Cash in the Tennessee too. You know. I forget the the game that we played, but getting we would get together. It wasn't a card game; it was a dice game. But I can't remember the name of the game. We wrote a song one time. Uh, called Mother Maybell. In fact, Joe went by the house. This is when mother, when she was still living, and borrowed that L5 guitar, and he played her guitar on the session. I've often wished that there was a picture of him with that L5, you know, doing the session. Porter. I haven't seen these pictures for years. Yeah, this is town hall party. Oh. Halloween. We we would always dress up for how I'm a witch. <laughs> I'm a witch. I'm trying to see who that is back there. California days when you saw Gene Autry once in a while. Yeah. Two dear friends, June and John. Dolly Parton. I remember her 18th, was it, no, no, no. 20th, was it her 21st birthday? 21st birthday, I guess it was. Porter gave her diamond earrings. Yeah. And I made her a little uh, needlepoint. And there's my number number three son. <laughs> that's what he that's what he calls himself. To Aunt Rosie. Love, old number three. <laughs> I'll take you. I don't know who this is. Anybody that doesn't know who that is, they're not a country music fan. Yes. Hope to see you again, George. When Joe had terminal cancer, John and June Cash had come over on a Thursday evening to see him. And so he passed away that night. And I had to, I called June and I said, I've got to get dressed and come out there where Mother Maybell is buried and get him a, a grave site. And June 
asked me to, if I could wait a few minutes uh, and she would call me back. She said, John is down doing hee-haw. So John calls me in a few minutes, 10 minutes, I guess. And he says, Joe will be buried at the head of Mother Maybell. And he says, uh, and you will be buried next to him, but you won't need yours because you ain't going to die. That was what he said. <laughs> God is good. I don't feel old. Uh, I'm not near as sharp as I would like to be. It's in there. I just can't get it out sometimes. It's kind of hard to deal with, but you laugh at it. I am a part of being responsible to welcome you to the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. So I volunteered, I guess, for about a year and a half. And, and then I, one day, I, they're hiring people. And I thought, well, you know, you can always use a little extra. And I got hired. So I, and I love it. It's something that gets me out of the house and helps to keep me going. How a person is supposed to feel or act when they get to be 92, you know. Hey, I'm almost halfway to 93, huh? Okay. Uh, but I'm here, and I might as well make the best of it. And I'm glad I'm here. So, that's because I choose to.